Hello, everyone. I'm Dana Perino, along with Jedediah Bila, Juan Williams, Jesse Waters, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. Kanye West off Oval Office meeting with President Trump, sparking a media firestorm. Here's a quick refresher of what went down yesterday. You know, they tried to scare me to not wear this hat, my own friends. But this hat, it gives me, it gives me power in a way. When I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. If he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest planes. But I love this guy right here. Let me give this guy a <laughs> I love this guy right here. The sit-down setting off CNN's Don Lemon. Uh, Don, what did you think? I, Wolf, I, listen, I, don't, there, I have no animosity for um, Kanye West. What I saw was a minstrel show today. Him in front of all of these white people, mostly white people, embarrassing himself and embarrassing Americans, but mostly African Americans. It was so hard to watch him sitting there being used by the president of the united states lemon taking his disapproval a step further by invoking the late rapper i'm sorry the rappers excuse me his late mother this was an embarrassment kanye's mother is rolling over in her grave i spoke to one of her friends today or texted with one of her friends today from chicago donda's friends i used to live there i know him she said donda would be would, would be embarrassed by this. She would be terribly disturbed by this. And he needs a father figure. He needs someone to help him and to guide him. And he needs a hug more than anything. Kanye, back away from the cameras, go get some help, and then come back and make your case. Others in the media are also blasting the Kanye Trump summit. Watch this. This is such a blitzkrieg of blathering ignorance on one level. And I say this as a man who loves Kanye West, who admires his genius, and who considers him a friend. This is the kind of conversation that would typically be held between people wearing hospital bracelets. There is a deep sense of betrayal among people who follow hip-hop and rap. This was a giant, shiny object in the Oval Office wearing a red hat. That but was if you think you're bonkers. going to get... Uh, uh, a thoughtful play-by-play -play and political analysis, you're not. Because that was an assault on our White House. Then why give it all this hype? Why fan the flames of the foolish? And it's not okay what happened here. And celebrities are criticizing Kanye, fellow rapper T.I., posting on Instagram, quote, This is the most repulsive, disgraceful, embarrassing act of desperation and auctioning off of one's soul to gain power I've ever seen, and other Hollywood stars like Chelsea Handler and Rosie O'Donnell also slamming the visit. We could go on and on, but we want to get to the discussion here. Uh, Jesse, let me turn it over to you. The uh, hysteria over this meeting was hot and heavy. Right. So if Kanye is so marginalized and so insignificant and such a clown, why is the media so angry? Mm. Why are they so upset? It's because he's influential, it's because he's making a lot of money, he's very talented, and a lot of people listen to him because he's very popular. And if the black community is open-minded about President Trump, then that poses a real significant threat to Democrats electorally. The Democrats have already written off the white working class, they've written off veterans, they've written off a key constituencies traditionally within their party. They have to drive up numbers among minorities in order to stay competitive with Donald Trump in 2020. So when they see this, this isn't good for them. And I remember, you remember, when Kanye West said George Bush doesn't care about black people. And the same media that's criticizing him now applauded him back then. So when you criticize, as a black man, a Republican, you're sane. And then when you spread love to a Republican president, you're insane. I don't like how that works. And Donald Trump won about 8% of the black vote. Does that mean all those 8% of African American voters in this country are crazy? They're ignorant? They're all fools? Women who vote for Donald Trump, are they gender traitors? Hispanics who vote for Donald Trump, are they nuts too? It's funny how the media, and they look really small right now, they're trying to dehumanize him. When the media says that voting as a black man for Donald Trump is against your self-interest, 
Who are they to determine who's mm -hmm. someone's self-interest? Why can't black Americans determine their own self-interest mm -hmm. by themselves? Why do they have to have the liberal media tell them what to do? And if you look at on balance, Donald Trump's trade agenda, his manufacturing agenda, his immigration agenda is beneficial to black voters policy-wise. And you can dislike him for other things, and that's fine. But on balance, I think it's fair for black Americans to say, you know what, I could consider the Trump agenda made in America, make America great again. Yeah, and in, in that scenario you talked about in, back in 2005, um, at least in the, last, in the recent past, Kanye West has actually apologized for saying that. Media never <laughs> would apologize. And I, I, I just, I just want to say, yeah, I'm part ahead. of the American media, and when he said that about President Bush, I was someone who definitely was highly critical, because again, he didn't know what he was talking about. So here you come and you say, oh, why can't black people be open-minded about President Trump this and that? Hey, guess what, Jesse? By your own measure, 92% of black people said our self-interest is not being served by the agenda being promoted by so this president. So he can't president. think for himself? No, he, if he was thinking for himself, he would have had some substantive argument to make. Instead, so, here's what he said, Jesse. Yeah. Oh, I put on this hat and it gives me superpower. I really want a father figure and then you know, he's separated by the desk. He has to get up and walk around. Trump doesn't even get up to hug the guy. He's there hugging Trump like he's holding on. He's trying to get something out of this. So is to Jim me, Brown a fool? No, let me, let me finish. Is Jesse, Jim Jesse, Brown did I interrupt you? Go ahead. Come on, man. So what I'm saying to you is you hear this man say stuff like, oh, Trump's on a hero's journey. Maybe he's on a folly. I don't know. But it all it looked like was some guy ranting, and I am, you know, personally offended by the kind of profanity he brought there. I don't understand how anybody Wait, tolerated it, said it's a big but I don't get <laughs> this. When you had people like Common, Jay-Z, Kendrick Lamar, doing things with President Obama, the right wing went nuts. They said these guys are rappers, some of them associate with uh, thugs and gangsters. Hey, what about this guy? All of a sudden, the man who's insulted Republicans, the man who has nothing to say other than his hat gives him superpower, is a Republican hero? This is ridiculous. It's absurd. And Don Lemon, amen. This is someone who is a shameful example of behavior in the presence of a powerful just, white man. I thought it was shameful how he went after his mom like that. You never go after someone's mother, Juan. You he didn't that. go after his mother. He, he said his mother, mother would be rolling up. Yeah, you know, that was a cheap the shot. The audience here, by the way, it you distort. A shot. It wasn't. You distort this whole conversation. This was not about black people or about his impact on the black vote. This is about how white Americans who say, hey, Trump has problems with race, feel about Trump. Now Trump says, hey, look, America, I got a black friend and a red hat. Okay, you guys, I'm going to have to interrupt. The reason I was looking like that is because we have tape from President Trump. Watch. From Turkey. He's, uh, I think, in good shape. He'll be stopping most likely in Germany for a full checkup. And then he's going to be coming to the Oval Office, most likely on Saturday. But we're very honored to have him back with us. He, uh, he suffered greatly, uh, but we're very appreciative to a lot of people, a lot of people. So Pastor Brunson's in the air, heading to Germany and then coming to the U.S. He'll be landing on Saturday, most likely Saturday in D.C. What caused the release, Mr. President? Well, we, uh, we spoke to Turkey and he went through a system and we got him out. They've been trying to get him out for a long time. Well, this has nothing to do with anything. There was no deal made at all. There was no deal. Uh, but we're very happy to have him and have him in good shape. I hear he's in very good shape. Mr. President, are you reevaluating the relationship with Saudi Arabia? Well, we're going to find out what happened with respect to the terrible situation in Turkey having to do with Saudi Arabia and the reporter. And nobody knows quite yet. Nobody's been able to put it all together. People are starting to form ideas, and as they're formed, we'll let you know, but it certainly is a terrible thing. Have your record been overlooked for too long? Excuse me? Has their record otherwise been overlooked for too well, long? Well, I think a lot of records are overlooked. If you look at Iran, if you look at so many other countries, take a look at Syria, you take a look at a lot of countries, a lot of countries' records have been overlooked, but uh, this is a very serious thing, and we're looking at it in a very serious manner. Okay? And we'll see you. We have a big crowd. Have you spoken to the king of Saudi Arabia about this I matter? I have not. I have not called him. I will, I will be calling him. I will be calling at some point King Solomon. You know, you're right in, you're right in the way of that camera behind you. I'm sure they, 
They think you're a very good looking guy, but maybe not that good from the back, right? All right, so go ahead. You're saying you plan to call him soon? Can you tell us I'll what be speaking to him, yes, pretty what soon. What should be like? Well, I can't tell you, but I, I will say that they are looking very hard and fast. And not only us, uh, a lot of people are looking to find out because it, it is potentially a really, really terrible situation. So we'll see what happens. Was it a mistake for Jared to develop such a close relationship? Yeah. With the, was it a mistake for Jared to develop such a close relationship with the No, crowd? I don't know if it's any closer than other relationships that people have. We have a lot of very close relationships with a lot of countries. But this is a uh, serious problem. Is Thank right you. President Secretary to go to their investment conference? Well, I guess a lot of people are going over to an investment conference. And he actually called this morning and he will make that determination but he was partially over there anyway a lot of people are going over to the investment conference we'll see what happens maybe some won't be going we'll make that determination very soon okay we'll see you over at the rally have you read the UN climate report yet <laughs> president trump talking about uh, pastor brunson uh, the american who was released from a kept well, a captivity he was being held by the by the turkish government um, and now he is going to be returned to America. The president says he should be back uh, in D.C. by Saturday. He said probably Saturday he's got to stop in Germany. He's going to get a checkup, and then he will be returning to America. So that is a big win for the Trump administration, and every American should be glad that Pastor Brunson is being returned to America. He never should have been held in the first place. We're going to get back to the story we were talking about. Jesse and Juan had a chance to talk about Kanye West. A meeting in the Oval Office and the reaction to it, and then uh, Greg and Jedediah hadn't had a chance. We'll go to Greg first. Uh, well, first, good news about the pastor. It shows what happens when you have a president president who doesn't blink. They, they knew that he wasn't going to change his mind. And okay. their economy is in a free fall. Yeah, so mm -hmm. here's the, the I want to address the, the central argument that Lemon has and others have uh, when you describe somebody as a, a minstrel or as a prop. I've learned in my life that any criticism that can be applied everywhere is useless. It's pointless. For example, I could just as easily look at Don Lemon and say, wow, CNN pulled out their prop. They needed, to, they needed somebody to talk about uh, Kanye, so they called up the black guy. So you can, see, you can use this. You can use this here on The Five with Juan. You can call, I can call you a prop, but I would never do that. The fact is, this sort of criticism can be applied anywhere that there are blacks and whites together. That's my point. Wherever you see an olive branch between a black person and a white person, somebody can say, ha, the white's using him as a minstrel and the black is seeking power. You can say that now for everything. And that's why it's so dangerous. Why not just take it for what it is? which you're seeing people actually having a dialogue. When you reduce somebody to a minstrel, or you make, or, or you, you have the gall to actually bring up his late mother to make a point in which you use his late mother as some kind of vessel for your own envy. What I saw there, Lem, I saw Lemon who felt, Lem, a person who felt ineffectual, who felt that he's not part of the game. So he sees what's going on in the White House and Lemon in his brain is saying, why can't that be me? That's not fair. I should be there. And so he went after this guy because this guy has the guts to stand up and take the slings and arrows. If CNN were around 2,000 years ago, the C would stand for crucify him. Mm -hmm. Jenna what do you think about especially the comments that he is mentally ill and that, yeah. that to me felt a little over the line over the line and what bothers me about this is that they've infantilized Kanye this is a guy who's been very successful he's a successful businessman he went in there he wasn't just talking nonsense as some have said he was talking about stop and frisk he was talking about what he cares about I mean what do you think all these celebrities that went into the Obama White House you think they were all policy experts they all went in and they sat down and they were a Dana Perino no they had an opinion. They cared about issues. They went in. They made their case. The criticism from the right was not personal attacks of those people. It was not saying things which have been said about Kanye, that he's dumb, that he's sick, that he's a madman, that he's a traitor. All of that has been said about Kanye. People were saying, well, when, when folks on the left were going in, uh, celebrities on the left were going in to, to meet with Obama and all that, the commentary was, 
Well, this is typical because, you know, Democrats and Hollywood are hand in hand. No one was going out there and saying personal attacks. Oh, 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 George Clooney is mentally unstable. This is over the line. This is because they cannot handle dissent. They cannot handle dissent. And as someone who has lived in New York City for a whole life, I taught it. I went to Columbia University. I taught in liberal academia. I can tell you that when you stand out, there is a pattern on the left of having to marginalize that person, of having to point out that there's something wrong with them of having to drive them out they are now trying to ruin this guy's career and ruin his credibility and they're going to stop at nothing mm -hmm. and i have a real problem with that whether i agree with kanye or not that type of behavior should not be accepted by the way what? greg i just I, I don't i just don't want it to go without comment that i don't think i'm a token or a, but you a, see my you see my point no, about I the don't argument see your point because i don't think anybody would say that to you greg no my and point is think, anytime and i don't think that given my record as a journalist yeah. i don't think there's any way that you'd say oh but gee people, does juan williams the, the i'm talking about the superficial looking at American color news people show? looking at color and going oh there's a black no, person and a white saying, person Greg, i'm saying it could be used anywhere you, as a white person i wouldn't say i would say listen what be happened token. this is what jedediah was saying let's look at the substance let's make a judgment exactly and when i looked at the substance i saw nothing but a public relations okay. stunt put on by the president and maybe kanye deciding it helped his reputation i am the token short person here. <laughs> oh. that is true uh, what uh, wait a minute. <laughs> token, I'm the token male short person. Okay, thank you. Let's be specific. All right, next, Republicans release a blistering new ad calling the left an unhinged mob. This has caused all sorts of problems. We'll show it to you. And be sure to check us out on social media for more behind-the-scenes action on The Five. We'll be right back. The RNC trying to fire up conservatives ahead of the midterms with this new ad. Here's part of it. I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. Maybe there will be. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. Get up and please. Get up in the face of some Congress people. Is this the quote unquote mob? And Congressman Steve Scalise, who survived a politically motivated attack, he continues to condemn this heated rhetoric. You don't resort to violence, and to see leaders calling on violence, uh, that happens in third world nations, not in America. I'm concerned that you're seeing an increase of this. Uh, you know, look, I would like to see leaders on both sides calling it out. You're seeing leaders on, on the right calling it out. You're not seeing any leaders on the left calling it out. So, Jedediah, all this talk about mobs coming from Republican leaders, is this a desperation move to try to fire up voters? Kavanaugh's done. They, don't have, they can't exactly rely on the tax cut to fire up their voters. So is this now, oh, the, the opponents are all mobsters? Well, no, I think they're trying to showcase that what, ha what has happened, that the left has transformed itself. I thought it was a great ad. This is, I often have criticized the RNC and said, you know what, they're not great at communications. They need to get better at it. This was phenomenal because this was taking, this was speaking to a lot of folks in the middle, a lot of moderate Republicans, a lot of independents potentially that, you know, they're going to want to vote in a presidential election in the future. And it was saying, using the very words of people in leadership positions right. that everyone knows in the Democratic Party, Hillary Clinton, Maxine Waters, Spartacus even got a, a, a feature <laughs> in there, but using their words and showing that these are people who are not just disagreeing with you, with Republicans. These are people who are advocating for a lack of civility. These are people, they in fact are the people who have gotten desperate because the economy's gotten better because they never accepted the election of Donald Trump and they've gotten so desperate to resist that that they're actually in a very scary place. It was a way of showing moderates and showing independents where the party has gone on the Democratic side, it's not where it used to be and it's not a place that you're going to want to embrace. And I thought it was brilliantly done for so, once. <laughs> so, Greg, yesterday, though, you said when you heard Eric Holder speak, mm -hmm. you didn't take it as a call to violence. You thought he's saying, hey, Democrats, uh, get tough. Yeah, you know, and um, if you look at the tape in its entirety, it's pretty. I think it's pretty obvious what he was saying is that we just got our our butts handed to us in the Kavanaugh stuff, and we got to go hand their butts back to them. Yeah. I guess that's how. It, but but I have to. But I have to say though that 
Holder is, uh, uh, he, he has selective memory because the Democrats have always been pretty low in a lot of ways. We just came from something. This commercial, you know, the, the Democrats made their bed when they marginalized due process. You got to define what a mob is, and it's, it, it's you know, an absurd witch trial uh, masked as a job interview that, you know, how many job interviews involve, you know, gang rape allegations freelanced by a conniving attorney. Uh, the definition of a mob is a punishment without due process and a judgment without proof. And I think that's why this is going to work. It's funny. I just wanted to make this point. CNN hates the M word. They hate the word mob. But we just watched them mob a guy. Mm. That's yeah. true. All right. That's 100% so, true. Uh, Dana, so I think the, the Democrats' position on this is, oh, my gosh. President Trump uses bare knuckle rhetoric all the time. He talks about the presses and people. He says, "Go ahead, beat them up. I'll pay your legal bills to people at rallies. Lock them up. Lock right. them up." So they're trying to match him, right? So, well, yeah, they, like, when an ad like that, the best narratives in politics are the ones that are based on truth. And if you can use someone's own words against them, then you should do that. And I think the mob thing is a really good example. The anger and desire for change on behalf of Democrats in 2020 is the same as it was for Republicans in 2016. And they are looking to nominate their own version of President Trump. Like, who's the angriest? Who's the biggest fighter? Who's the one who is going to fire us all up? And it's funny because they actually they want their version of Trump for as much as they can't stand Trump. They are looking for that because they think that's the only way to win. So that means that somebody like an Amy Klobuchar of uh, Minnesota, John Hickenlooper of Colorado, Mike Bloomberg, like these guys are not going to match President Trump's. Well, energy. because of their last name, <laughs> <laughs> Hickenlooper. Hickenlooper is a tough. That's one. a tough one. He's going to have to come up with a nickname. I, I would say. <laughs> I, I'm sure Trump will do that. Uh, and I would say, remember the Black Panthers with the batons outside yep. the polling station? I think it was Eric Holder that let those guys skate. And the paramilitary politics that we're seeing on this video. I don't know, Juan. I think that plays into President Trump's messaging that Venezuela is the left and make America great again is America, and it's a perfect contrast. And if you look at the Democrats' intimidation tactics, it burns into the psyche of the voter. This is not a theoretical argument about budget deficits. When you <laughs> see this, this has an emotional impact on people. And the greatness of America is because of the checks and balances. You know, you have the court here, you have the Congress here, everybody does their thing. And then in the midterms, the other people out of power kick out the other people in power and they don't kick down doors. You could either go the Tea Party route where you get a permit, hold a rally, mm -hmm. and you vote, or you could do civil disobedience, and I think the left would be better off if they laid down in the streets and made people lock them up. And this is civil, this is uncivil disobedience, and the American people, they don't have the stomach for that. I'm going to create civil. traffic jams. I think they're civil. <laughs> Not in Manhattan. Don't do it here. I think there's a right to say I don't agree. I think there's a right to speak out. And I think, by the way, the president, Not when says, I'm having my entree, the president says paid <laughs> protesters. He was totally wrong. But again, trying to feed the right something. Some of them were paid. next story. <laughs> has Greg all fired up. Stephen Miller's teacher, elementary school teacher, facing a backlash for mocking the advisor and what he did in grade schools. The fun, the fireworks, straight ahead. So much beauty in the world to shake your mind. If you think Democrats trying to attack Brett Kavanaugh over his high school yearbook is bad, listen to this. White House senior advisor Stephen Miller's grade school teacher reportedly suspended for claiming he was a loner and ate glue when he was just a kid. The woman who says she taught Miller in third grade told The Hollywood Reporter this week that back then, Miller was, quote, a strange dude. He would pour the glue on his arm, let it dry, peel it off, and then eat it. Oh, my God. I can't believe I even have to repeat that somebody, a teacher said that, Greg, I once licked a glue stick in kindergarten, so I guess my political career is done. <laughs> um, this is crazy to me. You're I a could, teacher. You I should could, disgusting. I am. She's a traitor. And she's on leave. By the way, I still eat glue. It's delicious. <laughs> it's low carb, and it just sticks Keto. to your gut. By the way, um, the, I, forget the teacher. Forget the teacher. This isn't a Hollywood reporter. This is an industry journal for Yes. Movies. What does this have to do with movies? <laughs> what are you going to do next month? Well, is it Variety going to cover the time Mike Pence drank from a toilet when he was two? <laughs> what is happening with you idiots? You're jackasses. You know what? I will defend the president and his administration. So here's my defense. 
At least you didn't sniff the glue. Oh. That's what I would say. And you know what? <laughs> what kind of teacher lets the kids eat glue? I Wait, mean, it's on her, too. Eat glue? But I mean, I didn't eat glue. Glue is delicious. You I, I went to glue stick. Come on. I mean, I did it. I was and you're and like it's what's funny to me about this is that this woman, this is a grown woman, and she's talking about what was then an elementary school student, and she's saying, "Oh, he was a strange dude." No, he wasn't a strange dude. He was a child. I have this. Everybody lost their minds. One. Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the the what's really going on here is that people have strong policy differences with Stephen Miller <laughs> over oh, it's immigration. So they, to tell a story and, no, like no, this? They were doing a profile in answer to Greg's point. I mean, they're doing a profile and then suddenly here comes the teacher. But I mean, there's a lot going on here. Remember, his uncle says that he is basically out of line with the family's roots in terms of having immigrated to the United States. His rabbi says that his stance on immigration is anti-everything that Judaism and Don't the Torah Don't believe it on the glue. For. And no, so I'm just saying, People are interested, and especially this week with so much going on, two-year-olds in immigration court, uh, the con administration now considering a new policy to try to break up in. People are upset, and I think Stephen Miller is seen as the architect. Are people interested? I, know, though, like, the I don't think anybody from... ever ate rubber cement. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, back Did you use rubber cement? When I was in class, <laughs> you, re you referred to Did glue as yeah, science him. milk. <laughs> <laughs> so we no. called it science milk. I do it's think so that delicious. every kid did this with glue. Right, and, and, and there's good But now you can get 15 seconds of fame. But we would never, none of us would ever have a career because everybody in Kenya. Well, I was a delightful child, Jenna. I don't have any worries about teachers out there. You're going to be the next president then? Maybe Jesse would be the next president. I don't want to have to do an apology. Don't eat, don't eat glue. Yeah, yeah, gonna yeah, get yeah, that. Or rubber cement. Or, children, rubber if you're or paint chips. Or paint, paint chips. Don't do that. Right. No. If you're running a story about kids eating glue, just stop. Just stop. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. Arnold is terminating one of his key political phrases. Oh, no, Arnold. That and more in the fastest seven up next. No. That's Kanye one. Just relax. Right. <laughs> Welcome back. Time for the fastest seven. First up, remember when Arnold Schwarzenegger said this? And to those critics who are so pessimistic about our economy, I say, don't be economic girly man. <laughs> Turns out the governor now regrets saying that, quote, at the time it felt like the right thing to do. I called them girly men because they weren't willing to take risks. In the long term, it's better to not say that. I mean, come on! This is what I mean, Arnold is Arnold for a reason. You can't say anything anymore, so forget about it. You better just mute yourself right now. It was 2004. It was before you know the the PC police ran the country, and nobody can just look at anything and just laugh it off. And maybe you don't like the comment. It's not the end of the world. Everyone, basically, we should all just start apologizing for everything we're ever going to say ever now, because at some point we're going to have to apologize for yeah, it. Yeah, that'll take me a long time. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think? Is really men offensive even now, 2018? No, I don't think it's the, it's the offense. What he said was. It's it's better when, in fact, we work together and try to come up with solutions rather than name calling. And I think in the Trump era and also in the hashtag Me Too era, he's saying, hey, you know what? I look back and I don't think it was the right thing to do. Dana. I was there at that event at Madison Square Garden. It was the convention. And I think about uh, it was based on the SNL skit, right? Mm -hmm. So he knew his audience and Pumped he was laughing. Up. So like, I wonder if they're going to have SNL apologize now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't right. see that coming. That's, the, that's actually the, the, the big point. Um, whether the, the phrase is offensive or not, I think you could argue that it is offensive. Uh, if you would call somebody a girly man, I would think that would. But th well, I when, take it back what I said about you in the green room. Yes, <laughs> but I, what my point is, to your point is that it was a, a reference to a, 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 a satirical character. Yeah. And so are we going to now damn satirical characters for their flaws? Because the flaws are part yeah. of the character. Fictional satirical, Fictional satirical characters. Satirical will say yeah. stupid things. And I, you know, I was wrong for my make-believe character to say something awful. That's idiotic. But to actually call somebody a girly man and believe it, you're probably a jerk. Right. All yeah, right. Up next, American cheese is under attack. And millennials are apparently to blame. Sales of the classic American staple have reportedly been plummeting in the last four years. Young people are now opting for fancier and more expensive cheeses <laughs> like Gouda, Asiago, and Cheddar. So, Gutfeld, yes. this, uh. <laughs> the millennials don't like this, and this is going bankrupt. Uh, you know, I craft singles, I, that was my idea for a dating site for people who like cheese. 
but it never got off the ground. Look, it, craft singles are awesome. They're a great drunk food because they're individually wrapped. And I used to make a craft single sandwich, which is where you take a slice, a, one slice of craft singles, and then you put in, in between two slices of craft singles. <laughs> and I like that. Yeah. They're only good for cheeseburgers and for grilled cheese. In my and opinion. quesadillas. Quesadillas. You got to make a quesadilla with those. Shut well, I, am I am shocked by how uh, my friends' children know much more about food than I ever did and ever will. I like a nice smoked Gouda. What about you, Juan? I don't mind, but I, I'm not a big cheese guy, but I must say that we make great grilled cheese sandwiches. I grew up on those. That was delicious. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> what about the, you, Jenny? The individual wrap. I, I eat cashew cheese. What? Sorry, cashew I apologize to, to everyone. What I don't that? eat dairy, so it's cashew cheese. It's like dairy? almond cheese, and it, it's really good. It's I, I'm prepping myself for the hate mail, but I really do like it. What's wrong with it? So, well, it's, it's not, not really good. Cheese. I mean, you eat pretty healthy. It's That's not really thing. cheese. Like, it's not, is but this it's, not cheese? No, it's like so the whole debate about is it almond milk or almond? No, it's just like it's watered this? down almonds. Do you know what they sell at store nearby? Pea milk. Milk made from peas. Yeah, of course. No, it, just, it, just, it, it just puts again. two things in my head that I don't pee and milk together. Okay. 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 We're going to move on one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Finally, just when you thought commercial air travel couldn't get any worse, check out this video. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. All right, Jedediah, she is giving herself a pedicure on a flight. <laughs> <laughs> not me, but I, I took a flight from Los Angeles and a woman was clipping her toenails no. next to me. No, oh, no kidding. Man. And there were toenails falling That's on the ground. Disgusting. And it wasn't, although that skin, it's a little worse, but Is I don't. Joy Behar? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at that. I'm just thinking to myself, I'm glad that's what she's doing. Yeah, you don't like to fly as it is. You don't like to fly as it is. Juan, have you ever experienced anything that repulsive on a flight? No, that's pretty bad. I don't, I don't know how you go. I mean, I guess you could go worse, you know, but that's, I, I, it's, a, it, it's talking about a lack of sense of personal Space. I mean, yeah, good God. probably a Democrat. I'm gonna <laughs> draw my mind on that. Don't do anything with your nails on your hands or your feet at all on a flight, especially ever. the feet. Okay, okay. Like nobody wants no feet me. ever. All right, no stay feet. right there, Fan Mail Friday. Next. Oh. In the night, I hear him talk. There you go. I wanted to see if they figure out what music that was. It's massage music because we need less friction. Well, that doesn't make sense. Let's, we need, we, let's get to the fan mail. All right. I'm trying to get some calming music. Great question from Misty Heinemann 40. I know that's something filthy in that name. What three things will you stock up in your fallout shelter? One. Uh, craft singles. <laughs> I'm not a millennial. How about spam? We'll get some spam in there. No, no, but seriously, I think, so I like nuts. Nuts are yep. good. Yeah, they would nuts. last you. Water, you gotta have some water. Have some I can't believe we pay for water. I mean, when I was a kid, the idea that we paid two bucks for a bottle of water, yeah. crazy. It's all about the portability. Or how about oatmeal? Oatmeal would be great. Boy, like you to pick some boring stuff for oh, a fallout shelter. All right. What about you, Jed? I'm thinking I'm writing them down right now, but mine are not going to be like Juan's. Mine, well, water, smart water, yeah, okay. salt and vinegar potato chips, because I'm unhappy when I don't have them. And I feel like even if I just have a few things, that'll make me happy. And chapstick, oh. because when my lips are dry, it's not good. Dana's like, yes, I know, you I know, have chapstick and shelter, potato chips. And the world is ending, and you're worried about chapstick. <laughs> no, 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 I want to be able to cope. You can't think about anything else. A hundred percent, right? Uh, I would have to do the chapstick. I would do <laughs> probably pumpkin seeds. Oh, roasted pumpkin seeds. Those are good. Mm -hmm. And eye drops because I have that dry eye. Oh, thing. I'll and borrow some eye drops. drops. Dry eye and the chapstick. I'm learning so much here, Jesse. <laughs> Go with Slim Jims, <laughs> a weapon. Yes. And lots of books to read. Oh, oh look I, at you. Got, I, I was going to say a, a a beautiful gun, a beautiful gun and booze, and a 3D printer to make other things. <laughs> Very so good. Like a great Sorry, combination. Can you make me a fallout shelter, too? Yes, you <laughs> can make, I make a fallout shelter for other people. Sell them. All right, this is from FM Kellerman. You can be the replacement for one member of a band 
Who is it and why? I'll go to you, Dana. Oh my gosh. The thing is, it reminds me in third grade when I was asked who my favorite band was. And, and I said, what did you tell Troy? I said Ario Speedwagon, <laughs> and they made so much fun of oh, me. You can like, never I don't say know that. Any bands. I don't really know any bands. You know, you know that story is going to be in the Hollywood Reporter next week. Dana <laughs> <laughs> Perino. Josh Williams, he was the one who made fun of me. Uh, he had an ACDC t shirt. But he disappeared shortly after. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good taste in music, yeah. though, Jesse. I'm going with Axel so we can get Guns N' Roses back together. <laughs> Is that what everybody wants? Yes, that's what everybody wants. It's n it's number two behind World Peace. <laughs> okay. Jed? I would do Maroon 5 just to unnerve you. <laughs> <laughs> go. Juan, go. Juan. No. Juan. <laughs> no, no, because that, that was my choice because I want to destroy Maroon 5. Oh. So I would replace that guy, Adam, what's his he, name? He would be a drive the, Or I'd join the Red Hot Chili Peppers and then immediately break it up. Okay. Uh, can I go back? Can we yeah. go old school? I mean, how much fun would it have been to be a temptation? Oh, yeah. Man, oh, that, and oh. to dance like that? Yeah, I thought you were going to say Jackson 5. How well, was that, that would be cool. Uh, what? What's wrong oh, with well, the Jackson 5? Well, it didn't turn out too well. Oh. <laughs> 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 what was slash is your favorite cartoon, Jesse? Mm. I like uh, Roadrunner. Yeah. Roadrunner. Yeah. Yeah. All right, beep, beep. You know? Dana? Flintstones. Mm-hmm. One? Uh, I wear a Huckleberry Hound t-shirt. Ah, oh, fantastic. Good <laughs> from the past there. Uh, the Smurfs, and I still watch them. Uh, oh, I like the Smurfs. Yeah. The Smurfs. I wrote down Chris Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get after it. All right. Well, the cartoons beat Chris Cuomo. <laughs> yeah, cartoons. Right. Yes, yes. Uh, what's the most ridiculous thing you have caught yourself doing in autopilot mode? What does that mean? It's from Frenchie Firecracker, your favorite person. Oh, there she is. So I guess it's something that you do unconsciously that you realize you're embarrassed about? Is that what it is? No, it's like, you know, like sometimes someone will come up to you and they'll say, hi, Juan, and I'll say, oh, good morning. And then you realize, it's not morning. I, guess <laughs> I was on autopilot. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. that. I remember quick. drive down the highway and you're just driving and then 10 minutes later you're like, Wait, I've been driving for 10 minutes. <laughs> no, that's very scary. You know? Yeah, you should see a doctor. You know, I would, I would see a doctor. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. I would, no one does, and no one's going to go you on You don't even have there. a license. Dana? I, <laughs> that's true. I think, you know, one thing that I think is embarrassing is when you're walking and texting, and you get in, you get in somebody's way, and you're like, sorry, 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 sorry. But the people in New York are quite pleasant about it. Oh, well, that's a nice Except for me. I get irritated. These people, why are they bumping into me? Just look yeah. up, walk. Yeah. Jed. I say thank you when it's not appropriate. Yeah. Like, I will open the door for someone, and then I, like, say thank you, yeah. even though I'm actually thanking myself. It's just a bizarre need to be polite. That's Ever do weird. that to a waiter, and they're like, well, which one would you like? And then you go, yes. Yeah. yeah. And the answer doesn't <laughs> yes. match the question. Yes. I'm never on autopilot. I always worry about it. Like, do you remember that Seinfeld episode where George Costanza walks out of the bathroom without a shirt on in the middle of a party? Yeah. No. I always worry that, that I might do that. Something like that. that I, could I, because I worry, it never happens. Never yeah. I never. And I, because no one invites you to a party. Exactly. <laughs> one more thing is up next. More music. Time now for one more thing. I'm going to go first. Uh, a new music for you. Country music star Jared Neiman has just released a new song today. It's called Old Glory. And previously he had only performed the song to servicemen and women because he does a lot of the USO tours. But he was inspired to write the song after hearing stories of bravery, real life sacrifice from our men and women overseas. He describes it as 100% heart, 0% politics. It's available everywhere. It's called Old Glory. Here's a quick listen. Always one of our soldiers came backstage and I saw tears running down his cheeks and he said you don't understand what I've seen and, and what my brothers and sisters have been through and that song is the closest thing I've ever seen to represent that. Neiman and check out the song it's quite catchy. One. Just do it even if you have cerebral palsy just do it. Take a look at this video. Today I am uh That's Justin Gallegos, a runner at the University of Oregon who has cerebral palsy. Nike just signed him to a three-year contract. He's the first pro athlete with cerebral palsy. He said the disability made the idea of becoming a pro. Well, to him, it was like climbing Mount Everest. Well, Justin, look around, baby. You're at the top of the world. Congratulations. Yeah, and he helped design shoes for others that have cerebral palsy. That was part of the thing. 
Gutfeld. All right, tomorrow night, 10 p.m., another amazing Greg Gutfeld show. We got Dave Rubin, love that guy. We got some lady named Jetta Diabila. <laughs> uh, you got Cat Tim, Tyrus, 10 p.m. If you miss it, I will never speak to you again. Now it's time for... Greg's Cockatiel News. A lot of news in the cockatiel world. Let's just roll the tape. Here's a tap dancing cockatiel. <laughs> wow. Oh, yep. no. It's pretty yep. good. Yep. Oh. See? And he, and he can hear it and, re and then recite it back. Wow. Yep. Exactly. Huh. And a little known fact about cockatiels. Delicious. Oh. Oh, no, I mean terrible. that metaphorically. They're just so lovable. You just want to eat them, but you don't. <laughs> Jesse, what do you got? All right. Well, the Eagles ate up the Giants Ooh. last night. Pretty big blowout over there in East Rutherford. Look at Wentz roll out in the pocket right. Pretty ill-advised throw, but Alshon Jeffrey came down with a touchdown. Here he is again. Zach Ertz, back corner of the end zone. Another touchdown right there. Three touchdowns, no picks. Great game. Philadelphia probably responsible for Eli Manning retiring after this year. Man, he had a bad game. Bunch of sacks, few turnovers. Really ugly. Sorry to do that to you, brother. Uh, also, Waters World live Saturday night, 8 o'clock. We're going to be covering some of the Trump rally in Ann Coulter. And Tucker Carlson will be there. And, of course, my ladies, Diamond and Silk. <laughs> <laughs> we won't miss it. Okay, Jedediah. I'm so excited for this. A baby elephant was born recently at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Look at the baby. Now, you think, compared to look, look at her next to her mom. But this baby is 281 pounds. Still adorable. <laughs> I still want one in my apartment in New York City. Oh. The biggest calf ever to be born at the Safari Park, bringing the total number of elephants there to 14, including four adults and 10 little ones. Look how beautiful. Oh, I can't take That's it. That's 280 pounds. Uh, 281 wow. pounds. The average, they're generally between An elephant. Everybody. They weigh a lot. But it's Maybe a lot. Yeah, it How do you not fall in love with that? It's so That's beautiful. It's an elephant. You ever I've need... seen him. It's no cockatiel. <laughs> it's no cockatiel. <laughs> you know no what? <laughs> for us. We had a great week. We hope you did too. We'll see you back here on Monday. Special Report is up next.